I'm introducing uh, Sarah Toomey today and she's a contemporary artist um, who's won awards, she's exhibited nationally and internationally. She's been a curator, a tutor and worked with the Damien Hirst, the renowned British contemporary artist and worked for him in his studio, which is, you know, absolutely amazing for those of us who love art, of course. Um, and we'll be introducing a little bit more about her. She's from East London and so she's a UK resident and has done a lot of work in and around London. So we'll be talking a lot about that today. I know and you worked with Damien Hirst, which is pretty neat. I was like, wow. Yes. <laughs> I did. That was fantastic. I must say, yeah, that was probably one of my best jobs ever. Yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, I yeah, was the... making his paintings for a long while and then a group um, were chosen to work on his butterfly paintings in London. And um, so I did that for two years. Uh, and then for another year and a half, I was made the studio manager, which was quite a shock. So... And then we all got made redundant. you I mean, do you sell a lot of your art now? Like I sold the black series when I first made a couple of black paintings, um, was in um, 2013, 2012. Yeah. And I put, I, they got selected into the Cork Street Open, which was like a global competition. Know, and yeah. so it was this thing based on the idea of prison actually like I knew someone close to me was in prison that was my brother and it kind of the, the painting reflected how I felt about life at the time but so because I always think there is light and black paintings hold a lot of light so something really even at the worst of times there's a bit of light and this was how it started that was the start. Anyway, they sold on the opening night. So I was really pleased. Yeah, I was really pleased. And I am currently okay. in an online exhibition with a black painting and two silver ones because I moved into silver. I ho silver. <laughs> I silver. I love it. What sort of price range are your, your pictures? Because I haven't noticed your paintings, you know, tags on them. Yeah, oh. like they're, they're just, you know, um, sort, I suppose like, 600 for a medium yeah. and then a big and like eight or something yeah that's a pretty but then i get question. really really large i'll go probably very very large but they never sell they just end up run behind the city and they're like i suppose a grand and a half because they're so big but yeah, i'll I show can't... you in a minute i do them on the floor of the studio oh you i like that yeah okay so oh can you see it's like so I'm just brilliant. This is on the floor, but that's the only space I can do it. And the rest, the rest I've put out because um, you can see I'm into black and silver at the moment. <laughs> They're fantastic. I'm loving that. <laughs> now you're 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 a you're a contemporary artist, and you know you you've been working, if you like, with the greats of of Damien Hirst and stuff like that. Tell us a little bit about that. When you obviously were working as an assistant manager, you were you were working within his studio, and we all know of his works because he's got quite a, an interesting take on things. Quite contrasting. He likes the religion and the and the and the, and the, and the he likes the sort of life and death, religion and science qualities to his work, doesn't he? Sort of yes. Like, you know, sort of the macabre edge to some of it. It's quite nice. Mm. And so, um, and did that influence you at all? Did you find when you're working there, what did you take away from working there? Because we all know about him, and that's quite nice for a, a, um, an artist like you to be working with him with such great works of your own. But I'd like to know how that influenced you when you first started there. And, and tell me a little mm. bit. Um, when I first started there, I had to do like a two day trial uh, in Gloucestershire to try and see if I was suitable to go in the studio. <laughs> so, I thought, oh, well, I'm never going to get in there. I'll be too rowdy or, or, or even too quiet. Or, you know, it was very nerve wracking. But I remember walking into the studio in Gloucestershire and I couldn't believe instantly what I was looking at. It was like the size of Wembley Stadium and, and it was full of um, Banksy paintings um, from the, like, which I'd never seen ever in my life. Like, from the, the size possibly to the ceiling to the floor, one after the other was sort of his paintings and then Damien's paintings. 
And then we would take, I was taken over to like this huge painting the size of this room and told to, you know, make the stretches from the beginning, like stretch the canvas, put the stretcher together, prime it, museum standard, all this. I was like, oh my God. Then I had to make a painting and there was people walking around uh, assessing whether you was doing it correctly and all of this because uh and it was very nerve-wracking and then if you made it through that bit you got chosen to come back and the next day so basically what i'm trying to possibly express is like the scale of the it went to a whole nother level for me like i knew i knew about art and i knew about having an exhibition but this was this was just like monumental scale of an operation going on so anyway i thought at the time I was teaching at Lewisham College, I thought, and I needed a change, you know, it was really heavy slog going at that place. So I just needed a change, but I didn't think I'd ever get the job. And then like about four or five weeks later, I got a letter saying, congratulations, you've got the job, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so I was there, I went, was in a classroom. <laughs> I was in, <laughs> I was in shock, so I really, uh, yeah, I went, went to London and we made a series. Um, it was for, actually, for an exhibition that he was having in Hollywood, of all places. So uh, we started, I, I started day one and just every day I went in was just the biggest, most fantastic learning experience because I learned to make work that was really... Um, it was so important that it was done correctly and I liked that about it too and, and there was a lot of expert people in there in their fields like from photographers to buyers and then Damien would come in and show people around and then he would chat it was very very relaxed very nice you know it was one of those sort of people he was a really down to earth kind of person. I can imagine yeah. you getting on with him because you're very down to earth and that's oh. a nice thing. Yeah, yeah, you are. So if when you get an artist like that so colossally massive in terms of his work and the, and the, and everybody knows him and all the kids know everybody knows yeah. him. And and then you've got like this whole um this huge thing. We never know these things because we think we don't realize it's like that. No. So you obviously you've got a great background yourself. You've, like I said, you've tutored, which obviously give you good ground. And obviously you've, you've got your um, degree and everything else in arts and everything. Mm -hmm. And you, so you're quite, you, you've done a lot of stuff in your time and you've learned a lot about how to do it properly, as you, as you said. And I think that's a great grounding because some people don't get that grounding in art at all, ever. Um, and they don't find themselves. But what I do like about your work is that you found this space of your own, your own creation, if you like, because your work's contemporary, it's abstract. We know we've got the Black and the Silver series, which is your most popular, and we've obviously got other landscapes and other series as well. But tell me a little bit about how you got into this idea around, particularly around the Black series, if you like, and um, the story behind that, because people love to know about these sorts of things, especially mm -hmm. when it's a more popular project something that everybody loves to have and if you like in their their space yes yeah. so tell me a little bit more about that okay well um the fact that you like you've mentioned i do have other work which is more like landscape and color abstracts and things like that um and it's it's a space where i think when you're painting you can kind of lose yourself and get carried away and forget things but I kind of got to a point where I, I felt I was just du duplicating stuff and I was almost losing, not interest, but thinking, what, what is the point? And, I, and at the time I was going through um, a personal thing that was bringing a lot of, uh, not so much depression, but I needed to express how I felt. And the colour that kept coming back to me again and again was black. And I was thinking, what, what on earth can I do with, with black, but I feel like I need to paint with it. So the second I started painting with it, I became, um, it became like a fascination, like, because I used, I decided I would use every different type of black I could get my hands on, and just for a laugh, see if they was all this, 
see if they was all the same and I'd make it like archive it and go here, here, here's all the blacks in the whole world here's one black there's another so I started getting into the surface color and it helped me get rid of anything to do with um, uh, like making a story or having to do a narrative it just was the uh, you almost make, make the end of the road is black there's nowhere else to go you've reached the You've reached the bottom. Congratulations! So I, I then um, put them all, started painting on a canvas, and then quickly realised that, that far from it being uh, like a depressing colour, it starts being really quite alive and um, spacious. So black actually opens up this almost an emptiness, and you you feel a, a free a free to roam around visually with your eyes in it and I was like oh that's a, that's really nice and then like so I started to to make work like that and also going back to the Damien Hirsch studio I was the I was in charge of the color so and the surface there so I was always experimenting a lot in the studio with what can I get to get the paint more metallic or can I make the paint more reflective and I would be often asked to do that because I could, could match colour quite well. So they That's sort of thing. And so I, it might be linked to that a little bit now I'm talking Yeah, about I like it. that. Let's go back to that little point there because we're talking to people who, some people are established artists who'd be watching, others are people who would like your work and want to buy it. Other people will perhaps be trying to establish themselves as an artist in the field, right? They just come out mm. of their, this their foundation degree or their degree in, in fine arts or something, or something. They would have come out of it and they're thinking, oh, well, what do I do? And, um, and I agree with you, it's a space of its own. And I like the idea because black is, uh, it's effectively no colors, all colors. You could look at it different ways, but the concept's interesting because it reflects mm. the light back at you as well. So you've got a whole context here with black. And yeah. then silver in it and I'm like thinking wow that's so interesting because mm. a lot of people steer away from it because in art colleges and things in art, in art you're not really taught to use black. oh yeah don't use black that's what they say yeah, and don't outline things <laughs> don't use black and for god's sake yeah. don't put a frame of black around it and, yeah. and you get a lot of like wow but then when people want to buy it they want to get involved in the space mm. want to have it on their wall so I'd like to also go back to the fact that you were in this space in your head when you need to express it on the canvas. Now, a lot of artists are quite kinesthetic in the words they work with their feelings, yeah? yeah. And you can work your feelings out and, and get that out there. And I think a lot of us do it as a, like a, a healing process at times in our life. Because yeah, obviously you've done that with the Black series. I assume you've done it with other things that have influenced you. So where do you get your overall influences for your work, artwork from? Where does it come from for you? It, obviously your feelings and... Hmm. Well... I think um, what what happens, uh, I think there's a kind of um, pro progression or, or some sort of natural uh, breakdown in, in your work where you start off, I started off doing highly, um, almost photorealism kind of painting. And then as I went along over the years, I've almost, the, the style itself broke down into shorthand almost so to the point where i i began to find um inspiration in in as opposed to the city which used to fascinate me like i used to paint tower blocks because where i'm from in dagenham there's a lot of and they're like oh paint was out your window oh look you love the tower block. but I, I found these tower blocks were quite um, geometric shapes in themselves. So that helped me, I think, to just focus on like a square shape and then light hitting it and all that. So that helped. So I think the inspiration it, it's at the current moment is coming from people's work like, um, you know, like that Malevich, the black square. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where there's nothing there it's almost there's so much you can look at online on the internet it's almost like I want to empty out and see what is there anything there and until I can get almost rid of things so I see his work as a kind of like what is that 
black square that he painted and and a new like Soulage is this French painter obviously you, you must know him he just does a similar like black paint and uh, he I think Ad Reinhardt he did it because I started doing it then I started after doing it discovering people who would who did do it and I was like oh thank god I'm not in well I'm insane but maybe I'm not as nuts as I thought but um probably I'm because I'm probably my inspiration is just trying to find a way to oh light that's it god that was a long old story when it to get to the point light I think really inspires me and and um uh how it changes perspective on whatever it is you're viewing and I think that's why the black paintings don't necessarily work too well in a photograph but they do work when a person is standing in front of the real thing because the light in the room alters the painting I so think I think it is light I think it's light too I think when we we take um because we we work with media a lot a lot of, and then when you take pictures and certainly even of my own work or anybody else's um we're very proficient with photography but it's very very difficult sometimes to conceptualize that idea of the light and um, mm -hmm. in fact i painted something very almost very contemporary it was my version of marilyn i was messing around playing there yeah? and oh, um, it's got a 3d emphasis to it if you put oh, light on it from underneath it it yeah. actually physically makes her look as you see slightly holographic wow. and it's a, it's a bit of an accident but i was playing with not her so much with what i was doing with the image yeah 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 and i remember thinking and it was my I mean, this is my husband he said gosh you know the light on that and it was because it, we got into the room in the art studio and it was dark and it was a bit of light from the doorway yeah and he said look and you put a torch on it i said god wow if we could only photograph it like that yes yeah. Yes, exactly. and, 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 and it was purely by playing, by playing, yeah, by messing idea. around. Yeah. And that's what you're saying. I love all that. I love that. Now, you're very contemporary in your works. As you said, you've loosened up your work. We all start off with that photorealism and copying and the idea of perfect pictures and fine detail. Yeah. But when some of the best artists I speak to have loosened their styles usually up a lot, mm. a lot, a lot. And, and then they found their space, if you like, these things that they're working with. And yours yeah. is quite distinct because you use oils acrylics you use cloth you use canvas you use all of this together combined yeah. what sort of process do you go through to create that then give us a little bit of an idea of how you mix this as you're mm. if you like mixing your mediums and uh establishing as you said in your instance quite quite traditional shapes within the in the concepts but we'll work with that a little bit so tell us a little bit more about that that'll be nice and this one this one's quite quite a new one have i yeah that i got one. it yeah Okay, so but basically I make the stretcher or, or find a stretcher, whatever was available basically. Um, and then I would uh, possibly put gloss paint all over it. Um, and maybe about, literally about 10 layers. <laughs> so it's quite a slow process. You want to get it nice and oily. So if you can see, there's like a lot of oil on this or just on these little squares mm. and and then there's a there's a um the, as you can see this this paint here is very flat so i would then start bringing a shape into into there and this happens to be a diamond which you can see i don't know if you've got the whole painting yeah, i can see it yeah we can see yeah it. and then i thought well that's not i, I sort of wanted a i'm into zigzags <laughs> so i i really am trying to get an idea that this is off lifting off the canvas this is on in front of this and this is going back almost like they're floating over a, a depth behind it and then I don't know if you've heard of a fella called Stuart Simple he he does uh, paint the blackest black paint you can buy yeah I have heard of him yeah but it's sort of funny I'm of, of a street artist <laughs> oh <laughs> like, right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I got some of that, and yeah. um, I started realizing, oh, there's another, almost as if as many options, but not as many near, but a minimum form of maybe that's a lighter version of that black because they're all straight out of the tin, so you can't really add white to it. 
to lighten it or darken it. You're just using mm. different layers. So, um, yeah, and then palette knife. Mm. I would put that on with a palette knife and then scrape it back down and, and keep putting it on. It says it's, it's got a bit of guts about it. It has, yeah. It, you know what? To... Do you know what it is? I'm looking at it here, and it's brilliant. And every way I look at it, it's coming out dimensionally off the picture, and it's fabulous because it's got this. It's amazing. It's like these shapes are coming out at you, oh, and it's, it's really involving piece of work because you really want to be engaged in it. Like he said earlier, you know, you you wanna you wanna be looking at it all the time from different positions. Yes, um, it's, it's a beautiful piece of work. The fact oh, you're working you. literally with this dimensional black, as I'm going to call it, is is just amazing. Um, so you have obviously to create these pictures. You've got your favourite brands. You've mentioned a couple of them. Do you stick to the same sorts of, um, if you like, um, paints and sprays and different um, mediums that you like to use, or do you tend to experiment with those? Yeah, I'll always experiment all the time with the with the surface. That's almost how it. You could get the surface together. Like, there's, you just pray that someone else, like this one here, up there, I'm trying to get another paint into that. I'm started making my own surface with, um, uh, you know, you can buy them, like, uh, I don't know the proper name, but the name, like, whatever they're called. As transparent surfaces. Oh, yes. I know the transparent ones, yeah, yeah. And you can buy matte ones, you can buy gloss ones, you can buy different ones. And then I've been mixing that in with my own pigment metallic -y stuff. So this one's almost like a, a funnel thing, which moves across, which is quite good fun in the, in the different Brilliant. surface. So this one here, I, I, I have used some ones I can... I suppose rely on but I know what they're going to do mm. and then I want them to do something more so yeah. all the time so where do you get your where do you get your gear from because obviously you put pigment in this are you buying pigments pretty much raw because obviously your background as we said with Damien Hurst and various other people will be experimenting somewhat more than the average artist might pick something off of your <laughs> Windsor Newton or something but you might oh, yeah be, no yeah thank you Thank you. Yeah. Mm. So there's another artist talking to an artist and somebody that's accomplished that because you have and you mustn't put that down. You, you, your work is beautiful. Very, very, very evocative. It gets you really involved. Um, oh, and and it's, I can understand why somebody would want to buy a piece like that and have it on their wall and just look at it and, and just enjoy it. And they could just be having a glass of wine or, you, you know, whatever. And they could just be sort of like just involving their mind in it. Um, mm. And I like that. I mean, that's what art's supposed to be about, which leads me to your exhibitions, because you've done quite a bit with, you've done a lot of exhibitions, haven't you? You've had quite a thing, a lot of things exhibited, and you've also won a lot of awards, which is pretty neat, okay, because a lot of people don't ever win those at all. Um, and so, you know, you've got quite a back history to your work, which I, I, mm. I adore as well. I'm, I'm really, really into that. Um, now, we we're looking at the we've looked at the workmanship we've looked at your studio you obviously work a bit off the walls as well as the floor <laughs> oh yeah yeah the, mm. yeah you put them up and... did you see the floor i'm on a bigger yeah, floor yeah go show us the floor again oh yeah i'm liking that does it work it's a quite oh i forgot quite a lot of um i walk on them just to get them flat and they need a bit of a you know that you've got to get you <laughs> Move them around a bit so they're <laughs> not so precious and you can I'm always rolling them up I've got a couple under the living room carpet at the moment yeah just yeah, if I like <laughs> them. and I've got nowhere else to put them so I've got a rug and it's like a magic rug and I I unroll it and underneath there's like layers another really? load of oh, another load of painting I love that <laughs> So, yeah. so you, your specialism is getting the canvases stretched correct, layering them, if you like priming them and layering them, that you get this really great effect first, and then we get all the work on, the, on them. I, I, that's brilliant. I love that. So now we've got this wonderful expression that we've, we've, we've found here. You've got you exhibiting and doing lots of good things here in, in the heart of it in London as right. well. And so what, um, where do you exhibit? Where have you exhibited this to you was quite prestigious that you thoroughly enjoyed? So, so give me an ex exhibition that you thought, wow, that was great. 
it was a great exhibition it went well everybody enjoyed it it was it was a success yeah yeah i suppose the first um because the first time when i was making the black paintings when they got accepted into the court street open uh i made the first one was called um prison actually yeah and um that was when I used every kind of black going, but the, the exhibition, I, I never normally get uh, through to any of these open exhibitions. So uh, I thought, oh, they're never gonna like, like pick it, but they did. And I got accepted and it got into the um, Cold Street Open. And uh, the final, I think the final 100 artists who got in, got to be in this exhibition. So I was really happy because I could bring my sister and a friend and say, oh, look, I'm in this exhibition, fancy exhibition in uh, Cork Street. No, let, you know, so it was really nice because a place like that, you're walking down the road and, you know, you're on Oxford Street and you're walking down towards past the Royal College of Art, all the places you got rejected from. You're going, oh, yeah, yeah, look at me. Look, I'm down here now. And then Polk Street is like that road where there's real, you know, a lot of artists and yeah. they're all established. So yeah, exactly. that was really nice for a place like this to put you amongst other really successful uh, artists down the street. And then the, the opening very night. Very nice. And then, so I walked in and there was a red dot next to it and I nearly fell on the floor, which meant someone had already bought it before I got there. So I was like, oh my, oh, get me a, you know, get me a drink, someone. So, um, yeah, that was really good because that meant money as well. It's just like, oh my God, like I just lost my job and I went in there and I got this, this, and then I entered it again the next year with us almost, um, the next one was called Archive of Black and the same thing happened. It made it through, it got into the final exhibition I walked in and it sold again. So, okay. and in between that, yeah, it helps on your CV and it yeah. means you've kind of made something that somebody's caught their eye and thinks it's as good as all these other artists. You I, think know? That's, I think that's a big thing, but I, I think that people lose their faith in the fact that they're that good. I mean, like, you, you must have a lot going for you to have been picked up with Dame Hurst, with the, of course, Gary, with, with, the um some of the awards i saw you got and you you know you've been there's some cool things in here i'm just reading down them um you can't be you know rubbish using a british expression you have to be good <laughs> yeah um especially in britain because you know we've got an art cultural we've, we've got an art culture we really have so you've yeah. got to have you've got to have something really going for you to be able to be doing that anyway um mm. It's for me, I, I'm I'm loving what I'm I'm getting involved in here. It's really quite cool. Now you name your your um your artwork with great names. Where do you get the names from? Do you think <laughs> what happens? Really? Yeah. Oh, I just I look at them and I'm like, that's saying to me, and then it's the word that I am like this sums it up in my head what I was trying to do overall. So yeah. they I quite enjoy that bit. It's like almost it's finished like now the paint is yeah. finished and it, it often turns out you start making a painting and it never turns out what you thought it was going to be so it's this other painting and then you're like what on earth is that <laughs> what is it all about and you end up going i know what that's about it's about this and i just feel connected to yeah the, the thing yeah, your, your descriptions of the names are brilliant and they really sort of they also draw you in because they're really really good they're very very um they they, they are like a like a little description or, or a story of their own yeah so i love all that i was looking at them thinking gosh that's that's amazing that's a good that's a good description of it now from my point of view you to me seem that like you've always been the arty type and you're an artist and a creative and all that yeah but where did you find that you li liked art? Did you find that one day you thought, I'm, I'm going to be an artist? Or did you start as a kid being good at art? Or how did that happen for you? You know, obviously. Uh, yeah, no, no, I was always, um, 
uh, drawing when I was indoors at home when I was a kid. Um, but there wasn't art it, like around or anything, but it was just like I could find a space to escape into when I was like, you know, in the living room with like the six brothers and sisters and uh, a dog and me dad, and it was quite chaotic. So I used to start drawing and I could switch it all off and I, I quite enjoyed that. So that was, um, but I never thought, uh, I suppose I always secretly wanted to be an artist, but I never thought in a million years I would. So I just, um, yeah, I just was drawn to the art class at school, which was great. And I loved writing, but I, I think, um, yes, that I oh, want sport. I loved sports. Mm -hmm. So it was almost um, them three areas that I used to be drawn to or, or everything else that's absolutely rubbish beyond belief at. It's like <laughs> Calamity Jane, you know? So <laughs> I just, um, so yeah, I just sort of kept drawing and, hoping I, I would uh, get into an art college or something. But yeah, like I, when I was younger, um, I wasn't really allowed to go to college because, you know, you've got to get a job and stuff. So Thanks. that was sort of out the window, that idea. So I, I got a job um, in a graphic art studio as a messenger at the West End. So I was just delivering artworks around the West End for a studio. Um, yeah, so I was like doing that. And I was the only girl in an all male studio of like 25 men and me. And they go, here you go, deliver that in Regent Street. And off I'd trundle, but I quite liked walking the streets, <laughs> walking the streets um, and delivering artwork. And I think I was working as a graphic, then I started doing line drawings. Mm. Um, and I became a graphic artist. I did get on the board after two years. Um, and then I remember losing my way one day and ending up in an art gallery. When I was about 20 or something, I was like, oh my God, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Because I was so used to making work um, graphically mm. that when I lost, uh, I was standing in front of this painting and it dawned on me then, oh my God, I would love to do that. I would love, to. and I really do think that that was the moment I thought I want to be an artist because that is uh, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Although I'm surrounded by people doing line drawing and uh, it was more like advertising. Yeah, it yeah. Was, there was no, yeah, no, I can't no heart describe in it. it. No soul no, or heart. No. Now your workspace. Can we have a little look at your workspace a second? Because you've got the, you've got sure. your you've got all your kit out and let's have a little play with that now right prepare yourself for this mess <laughs> right so i've got this is normally i've one tape to the wall but i've got it was too too much but this workspace here yeah you can see yeah. all of my paints um uh, as you can see i had a colored one on the go i've got a lot of oil this is me in a cupboard. I live in a cupboard. <laughs> and uh, here's the black. Yeah. Here's some black. Nice. Uh, yeah. Lots of different, you know, like soft gel glasses. Yes, yeah, nice. Golden, all of this. And then in here is separate to all that is, this is organized chaos. Oh, this, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and there's, um, you know, the one where there's fisherman's friends. <laughs> yeah. That was a sailor. I love it. Every time I look at that, I think of my dad. And anyway, here's a load of oil paints that I'm always, always, uh, I love oil. That's got to be my favourite medium of all. So, yes, yeah, so these are my oils. I'll get you out of the cupboard now. And then my brushes, the most beautiful. This is my brushes here. Yeah, I, I love them like that and then the best thing ever the other day look what arrived this is like the best thing all these beautiful brushes so what brand uh, are those what which ones are them which, which okay so these were really reasonable and um they're called handover series and then this one's called black hog and it's just 
like they weren't expensive is what i'm saying because yeah. i went and tried to find the most the bargains and um mm. honestly these were so reasonable yeah so they're lovely brushes i can see that from here because shaping on the top the tip they're nice they are yeah the edging on them's well, nice yeah this one i've had this one for years i love him even though you can see that, that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i got ones like that yeah <laughs> I'm so, yeah it's amazing isn't it well you just you know that's gonna yeah. give you these very much need yeah and and where's, the, just... where's the pigments that you use as well these silvery pigments as well because yeah so they're in the fisherman's friend box oh so, yeah that's a box yeah 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 so this is orange there um this is i think there's black in this one but i put it i decanted it into my frizzies hair, hair salon um yeah and look at that beautiful color but yeah the black's in there somewhere as well because you can see the difference with the colors mm. this the oh yeah the blue there's the black you know yeah, so. fantastic and where do you get hold of those for those people who want to use pigments because some people want to know about stuff like that because they don't that's use it a, yeah oh, ivory black that's um you know like in uh the art shops sort of where was did i get that it was cowling and wilcox art yeah. shop um and they uh also you can get things online i often yeah. do that because I get, uh, I go on eBay and I'll type in um, secondhand paint, mm. basically. Yeah, yeah. And quite a bit of that came from someone who, obviously, they, they're taken up painting, they didn't want it no more. And I get things like that. I also, that's why I get all my oil paint on eBay. Because I, I know there's a lot of people who started off when they're young and they, they, getting going or they're trying to be aspiring artists and they don't want to lose that flame you know that thing that mm. we get inside us what would you say to them what, what advice would you give to somebody thinking about becoming an artist and, and finding themselves and finding their style like you did you know it all, I know it's serendipitous and you went and did all sorts of cool things but what would you say to them if someone just finds their own uh, feel of what they're comfortable with when they're painting regardless of what the results are on the paper don't be judgmental of what you're looking at because that kills everything that almost makes the experience of being an artist just awful because you just this is rubbish that's no good because all you can see basically when you look at your own work is everywhere where you went wrong anyway all the faults so you don't want anybody you, you know that's going to happen, but you, you just need to keep, uh, keep going. Uh, even if it's the smallest way, just get um, a couple of paints and a little bit of paper and just start messing around, like you said earlier, having fun, mess around. Yeah, just find your space. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. the one, it's, the, it's kind of in life, it is possibly the one area you can mess around and the rules are your own then then you can just just make a big mess and not worry about it and leave i always, I always say that what's the worst thing that's going yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. oh my god yeah so you just make a mess and don't worry obviously yeah. yeah if you're enjoying it keep going and have the focus on are you enjoying it as opposed to what is the end result? Is it going to go in a gallery? Is it going to go here or there? Because that's style. you think, oh, no, uh, I'm not really getting on. No one likes my work. No one's bought anything for like three years <laughs> or whatever, or a year or three weeks. And so you start, you know, finding a way to I, stop I, doing it. I remember, I remember that, not just with this performing artist now, but Michael Bublé saying, you know, he, he, he just puts out his work and lets, mm. and lets the audience pick it up. He doesn't think about it. He just creates his songs and his... Yeah. And, his and, and I'm thinking, wow, that's awesome. And he just... That's great. Yeah, and and, and then, then lets it take. And then if somebody yeah. likes it, and lets his other people do the work with that. The, the thing where you want to... Sorry, teach the kids. That's where I'm going. Teaching the children. You wanted to start oh, yeah. teaching kids and teaching Not adults. Kids. And, Adults, yeah. Well, yeah. What was, yeah. What was it? What was the plan there? I was hoping yeah. to do some, like, build on what I'd learned at the last job, painting. Yes. Uh, teaching how to paint, 
and I thought I could do it on Zoom or something. And you can, yeah, 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 people. yeah. Yeah. So um, I was. I, I've taught a lot of people on Zoom myself, and, and on Zoom before I've taught people on um, FaceTiming as well back then. Zoom is better now, actually. And um, I've taught a lot of people over cyberspace. Um, and I've taught them different things because some of what I do is, is also around, um, I like writing and, and different aspects of things and the art. And so yeah. I've been able to do that. So your work then, Sarah, is really well priced. I mean, obviously for what, what you've got there, you've got mm. some beautiful collection where people can find it. Now, where would they go to find your work if they wanted to, to actually have a look and perusal and perhaps purchase something from yourself? But they got, you've got a site, I believe, the website, yeah? yeah? So there, there are, I've got saratumi.com where yeah. they can look. Well, anyway, I'm going to thank you for today. You've been a oh, delight. Yeah. You have been an absolute delight. You, you too. Thank, thank you. For more tips and ideas on painting, please subscribe below to the Simply Inspired channel.